What's up guys? Welcome back to the RV toilet repair chat. Oh wait, no, this is RV living yet, but it seems like I always have tools in my hand. Today, new rig, new leaky toilet valve. Um, so I got a new one. Actually, the last video, if you were looking for a Thedford toilet valve repair, we'll link that here somewhere. Um, this is a Dometic 300 series, actually a 310, but I believe they're all the same in the 300 series. And we have another valve leak so let's walk you through how to fix that because I'm sure I'm not the only one let me show you this is a different issue than I think a lot of people have uh, most people have the valve leaking onto the floor and you know whether it's a crack in the valve or you know the, the hose is leaking or something like that and it's leaking onto the floor we're actually experiencing something a little bit different and let me show you guys so what we noticed and in a residential toilet if you have a leaky toilet it's not that big of a deal you're wasting water you're wasting money but it's not going to do any damage but in an RV uh, toilet there's no overflow there's no the flapper is closed so there's no place for the water to go and in our particular situation after you flush you'll see that the water keeps rolling out and it continuously fills up the toilet um, so something internally in our valve is actually letting the water bypass and eventually this is just going to creep up there say we left for the day eventually this is going to pour out of the bowl if there's enough water you hooked up to uh, RV campsite or something like that so this hopefully you can see it is not supposed to happen and the only way that water can pass is if we have a bad valve so this is a pretty inexpensive valve. I got this on Amazon. It seems to be the cheapest place I looked around. Um, I think there, it was like less than 20 bucks or so. But I'll leave a link below for that if you want to check it out. If you have the Dometic 300 series um, side lever toilet, this is the valve that you're going to need. So it's, it's a pretty easy process and let's walk you through doing it right now. So first step on any plumbing repair is turn off the water. Do, right but hey be surprised how many people just get right into it and forget that step and now they got a big leak because they just disconnected the water line um, so let me turn the pump off and I'm gonna drain whatever pressure there is in the, in the line right now it stinks like dookie it is dookie <laughs> All right, fortunately versus our other video, we do not have to take the toilet out in this case because I have plenty of room to work behind it. The first step I would check that you have all your parts. And this comes with the valve itself. It comes with two screws and one washer for some reason. So, oh, no, two washers and a new pipe clamp. So the old unit has one of these crimped connectors on it, which you're going to have to cut off eventually. It has the water line coming in, which is just a twist off, which you're going to need some channel locks or something like that. And then there's two screws right here and right here on the back of the unit. And when you unscrew those and then pop these clips out, this whole unit should slide out. So let's do that next. So I always like to use a towel just in case, because you're always going to have a little bit of water left in lines a lot of people will have this valve this um, washer go bad inside and you'll start leaking out of here or I've seen a couple people that have cracks in the valve itself along the thread so it leaks out of here either way you have to replace the uh, the valve itself so next step is going to be you can cut it off or break it off. Other way, it's got to come off. All right, I'm going to try to cut it off with some diagonal cutters. There we go. This is why the towel is a good idea. Okay, so your water lines are free. 
This unit should, for some reason, I think somebody's worked on this in the past, because there should be a screw right here and a screw right here, and it, those are missing right now. So at some point, somebody's probably already repaired this unit and just didn't put the screw back in. So be very careful with all these RV parts because it's very brittle plastic. There we go. So it's just a matter of prying the little tab with a flat head and this whole unit pops out. And that is our old valve. So the new valve goes in reverse order. You're just going to slide this guy in here, pop, and in this case we're actually going to use the screws as recommended. Kind of flying blind back here but just feel for it there it is okay so your valve is back in now we need to reconnect the, the water lines all right so you don't need teflon tape but i like to just belt and suspenders everything so on the threads for the water supply line, it does have a washer, but um, I also like to put Teflon tape on the threads just to be safe. This is not totally needed, but you know, we're here anyway, so might as well. And Teflon tape you want to wrap with the threads, meaning the way that your nut's going to go on is the way that you want to wrap your Teflon tape on. It's a little tight space, but... On some plastic like this, I'd probably wrap it you know, four or five times. On brass, maybe seven times, just because it's a little coarser. And then you're just going to screw your water line on. Be sure to do this by hand and delicately because it's very easy to cross thread these plastic threads. So if you put it on crooked, it's going to bite right into them and then you're going to have a really hard time getting a tight seal. So just be real careful with how you're putting this on initially and then once it gets in there it's going to thread pretty easy and just finish it up with your channel locks and don't over tighten it because again this stuff is very brittle just keep it snug and just then some and you can always come back and tighten it a little bit if you notice a little leak so monitor it um, and this is why they give you this adjustable pipe clamp because we cut off that PEX crimper. Um, so this is what you can use. First you're going to slide it over your tube. Slide your tube on the barb. And you're going to slide this down in the position. And same thing, you're going to use a screwdriver or a screw gun to tighten this down. And the trick with this is you always want to start it over here because this thing will eventually move around and you don't want to start over here and then have it behind the, the tube where you can't get to it. So, right position before you torque it down. And same thing, you don't want to go commando on it, <clears throat> but you want it nice and tight. All right, so that's just snug. Everything's snug, looks good so far. And next step is turn the water on and hope for the best. Alright, so when everything's up to pressure, just come by and touch everything, make sure there's no leaks. Maybe even take a dry paper towel and wrap it around and notice if you have any moisture, obviously initially wipe off everything and then just make sure it's good to go. We got a little bit of a leak right here, so tighten that pipe clamp a little bit more. All right, so that took under 15 minutes. It was under $20 part, saved you probably an hour shop time and taking your rig into a repair shop and waiting for those guys and you know, God knows what they want to charge you. Um, some basic tools and just a little bit of know-how. So definitely encourage everybody to try this. Again, I'm gonna leave the link below for the part if you're looking for the 
plug valve for a Dometic 310 toilet. And if you're just checking this video out just for the repair, uh, please leave us a thumbs up and maybe even a comment if it helped you out. And if you're our normal subscriber, you know, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video, which will hopefully not include a toilet.